Okay, so um, we'll look at these type A incomplete records. Um, so the one we're, we'll use as an example is the 2015 question, which is A. Murphy. Now, um, the reason I've chosen this is that they, you know, compared to some of the other questions, they've thrown in something that wouldn't have been seen before. And again, it's working through the process of how you deal with something that you have you will have seen before, but it'll be in the context of a different question. So in this case, it's um, the sale of goods uh, not being recorded in the books at the end of the year and stocks still being in the warehouse that you don't own. But we've seen that in, the que in question ones and tablers. Um, so it's just trying to work out what you do. But we'll deal with that. Um, we we'll deal with that when we when we get to it. We'll just make a note that 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 is something different that you mightn't have seen, and don't let it put you off. It's actually going to be quite straightforward. So first uh, first thing we do on the thirty first or on the first of the first, Murphy purchased the business uh, for two hundred twenty thousand. Now the amount he buys the business for is the capital of the business. So we're going to put that in our capital. Um, so that's two hundred twenty thousand. So, excuse me. When we buy a business, um, you generally pay more for the business than what it's worth. So, uh, what we always do is check and see if there's any goodwill. So we'll have to make a a uh, goodwill working. So, goodwill is going to be uh, what we pay for it, which in this case is two hundred and twenty thousand. Minus what it's worth. So in this case, what it's worth is its assets minus its liabilities. So its assets are 180,000 uh, stock plus 17,000, uh, sorry, 180,000 premises, 17,000 stock, uh, 18,000 debtors. Insurance prepaid of twelve hundred as an asset. Uh, then you're going to take away the trade creditors of twenty two five. Uh, wages due as a liability. You take that one away. And your cash is an asset. So add on. So the business is worth one hundred ninety two three hundred. We paid two two hundred twenty thousand for it. So its value is the two numbers taken away, which is twenty seven or its value of the goodwill is the two numbers taken away, which is twenty seven thousand seven hundred. So we put that in into our goodwill. Obviously the very first step we did, which I, I didn't go through, was to just try your skeleton. It's a normal trading profit and loss cage uh, shortfall. And then a normal balance sheet. Okay, so we've worked out the goodwill. Um, I would then uh, start again at the top and start with my premises uh, and work my way across uh, all the way down to the bottom, um, dealing with dealing with all the different workings as you come along. So I've got a premises of 180. Now we know premises is an asset, so I'll just get that in there. Now let's look see is there any other mention of premises did we buy a new premise did we revalue premise did, did we do anything like that so uh, with premises 180 look at our bank payments there's nothing there about extensions uh, bank lodgements who didn't sell anything but there will be this thing here there's normally you, you borrow money and build a build a new uh, uh, build a new showroom so Murphy borrowed 120,000, part of which was used to purchase an adjoining showroom costing 90,000. So he built a new showroom costing 90. Um, the rest of it is about what he did to pay for it. Um, with all of these assets and expenses, we can then just check is any of it to do with the private section of the business. Nothing there. Uh, there's nothing at the bottom to take into account. So premises is going to be one uh, 180. Have to add on your ninety thousand. 
so your premises is 270 so that's that done uh, we can we can leave premises alone now uh, next one is stock 17,000 well that's our opening stock um, then we have our debtors now in incomplete records debtors is our queue uh, in these type A ones um, where we're asked to work to the trading profit and loss account debtors is our queue to work out our sales and creditors is our queue to work out our purchases so this is our, our sort of big working um, so just uh, we'll go on to our workings page and we'll uh, do our sales so sales is made up of credit sales and cash sales so generally what we could say about credit sales is that uh, our credit sales is made up of what we owed um, are the payments we made uh, to our debtors or the payments we received sorry from our debtors plus any uh, any money we're owed at the end of the year from our debtors and then obviously we're going to take away our debtors at the start of the year because they are to do it last year okay so uh, last year's debtors uh, figure is 18,000 so that that's 18,000 of sales um, that that took place in 2013 so we paid 34,000 of which 18,000 was last year but then we still have an outstanding debtors of 20,400 okay so what it would be so we take our debtors figure payments to debtors 34 minus uh, the 18,000 um, from last year and then we're going to add on this 20,400 uh, okay um, and I'll, I'll just work out that sum there um, just over here it says QC So that's 36,400 okay um, now that is not actually going to be the answer I'm just going to leave it there for the time being because there's another change there with the debtors down here but I'll just leave it that will be the normal way we do it uh, the cash uh, sales then cash sales are made up of all of your cash payments all right so basically on the on the if you were to do a T account um, your cash sales would be on the debit side. Uh, sorry, the yeah, the debit side of your bank account, of your cash account. Sorry, and all the cash payments would be on the right, and they'd have to balance out. But just as a a, sh a, a shortcut, the way I would do it, uh, we don't have to do it with a T account. We can just show that your cash sales is all of your cash uh, cash payments. So one hundred and ten thousand plus uh, forty five thousand. 800 plus 86,200 okay um, now it will also uh, it will also add in our cash balance at the end of the year so this 600 from down here has to be added in and then you take away any cash balance at the start of the year and then the final thing we have to add in is any cash drawings. So Murphy took stock to the value of uh, 100 per week and cash of 120. So 120 um, by 52, which is uh, 6240. Okay, so yeah, I'll just move that in so it's going to be seen like that. So. Anyway, the answer to that is uh, so one one zero 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 forty five eight uh, plus eighty six two hundred plus six hundred minus four hundred plus six two four zero so two eight two four eight four forty. Okay, um, so 
so basically again just your cash sales all your cash payments plus your cash drawings plus your cash balance at the end of the year minus your cash balance at the start of the year will give you your cash sales so your total sales then would be the two of those added together which is 284840 now that would be normally what we do I'll just show you now this uh, this end of the year thing so at the end of uh, on the 31st of the 12th 2014 goods with a sales value of 6,000 were sold on credit at a markup of 20% of cost uh, they hadn't been recorded in the books so that means they hadn't been included in debtors so that debtors of 20,400 becomes an extra 6,000 added on so we're going to change that to 26,400 and then this will change uh, to 42,400 as a total so your sales will go up to 29840 so all you have to do is say well what's happened so if you sell goods on credit you sell them to debtors so debtors at the end of the year have to go up by 6,000 which means your sales have to go up by 6,000 um, so we we'll just change that debtors to uh, 26,400 now I would change that number there immediately to 26,400 on your question uh, because when we go to put that in later on in your balance sheet um, it's important we put it in as 26,400 if you want then um, we can finish that off now so it says um, the goods were still in the warehouse and were included in closing stock obviously if we sell the goods we don't own the goods so they shouldn't be included in closing stock so I'm just going to change the closing stock now so closing stock was 16,200 but we have to take away the 6,000 but at its cost price, so divided by 120, multiplied by 100, um, which will be, uh, let me see, 6,000 divided by 120, multiplied by 100, so that would be 5,000 to take away, so your closing stock would be 11,200, and again I would change that on the... Uh, on the question sheet now that's all that you do with this big working here you're changing stock and you're changing debtors and be, by changing debtors you automatically change sales as well all right so i'll just put that eleven thousand two hundred into your your closing stock here and i'm going to also put in that debtors um in case i forget uh, so debtors change to um twenty six thousand four hundred Now, from this point on, it's it's just a normal, uh, normal incomplete record. There's nothing overly difficult about it from here. Okay, so the next thing I see, oh sorry, I should have put in my sales as well. Uh, so, um, sales is two ninety eight forty. Um, all right. So next thing I see is three months insurance prepaid. Now, if you have three months insurance prepaid. Um, and then if we look, we see an annual insurance premium of 3,800. Well, that means if you have three months prepaid, then an annual premium, you also have to create uh, three months prepaid at the end of the year. So, um, so let's look to our insurance. So insurance starts off at 3,800. Now that's for a full year, so that's 12 months. There's a prepaid at the start of the year, so we add on prepaids at the start of the year. Um, so we're going to add that uh, 1200 on. And then Basically, we're paying our insurance from the 1st of April to the 1st of April each year, so we're going to have to have three months prepaid at the end of the year. So, so we're going to find three months, and it's an effect of the 3,800. So, 9.50. gets taken away so 
So that gives us insurance of 4050. Now just like all of our expenses, check and see if any of it is uh, drawings down in this bit here. There isn't. So that 4050 can go in our expenses. Um, so that's insurance done. A creditor, as we said, was our key to do our purchases. So we're doing it in the same process as our sales. We look at our credit sales and our uh, cash sales. So um, we'll do purchases. Now, credit purchases is payments to creditors. So we've paid 42,100 creditors, of which 22,500 was last year. So that's, we take that away. But there's still an outstanding 32,600 at the end of the year, so we'll add that on. So that was 52 two. Um, now, then you've got your cash purchases. Now, cash purchases are given in the question. We don't have to work these out. So if we look, you'll see there's purchases, 86 two, and it's cash. So cash payments, 86 two, is our cash purchases. So our total purchases before any drawings is 138,400. But there is always drawings of stock. So it tells us Murphy took goods to the value of uh, 100 a week um, from the business. So it'll be minus 5,200. So that's where we're at there. Now, um, I'm going to come back and do the drawings working at the very end. Normally I would open up a drawings working at this point or earlier and just keep adding to it, but I'll, uh, I'm will i going to, I'm just going to leave it because um, just just to make it more visible and, and easier to follow. Anyway, so that's our total purchases there uh, for the question. So 133,200. Um, so we'll slot that in there. Um, so we've worked out the closing stock was 11.2, so I think I'll just get myself ahead here and uh, finish that bit there, um, giving us a gross profit of that. Um, okay. So then we've got wages due, 1,800. Now, wages due always ties in with... Uh, with salaries and general expenses. Um, so there's no mention of wages here, so just tie it in with general expenses. So we don't have to do it on a working page, it's a nice short one. Um, now, if there's wages due at the start of the year, they're to do it last year, so we're gonna take them away. So we're gonna take 1800 away from the 45.8, which will give us 44,000. So 45.8 minus 1,800, 44,000. Um, and cash, 400. Do nothing with that. Um, we use that to work out our our cash sales and our, our uh, sales working earlier on. So we've got a chunk of it done now. We've the top half uh, top half finished. So we, we move on and we go to our, our cash payments, bank payments, and bank lodgements. So the first one is this lodgements of 110,000 here. Now we don't do anything with that. It's contra entry, so it's already done with this 110,000 here. So those two match up, so we don't actually have to do anything there. Uh, general expenses we've done, and purchases we've done. So we've done all of our cash payments. Um, we'll go on to our bank payments, creditors we've dealt with. Uh, light and heat is our next one. Now, there's generally a light and heat working. So, go to my workings page. So our lightning heat starts off at 6,800. Uh, there was no stock of oil at the start of the year, otherwise we would have seen it. And there was no lightning heat due at the start of the year, otherwise we would have seen it. Uh, but at the bottom of the question, there's no stock of oil, but there is a electricity due. So, we can add on that 380. Um, 
so that's 7180 and pretty much all of the time there is uh, drawings of light and heat so it's 25% of light and heat used so that's 25% of this 7180 um, so that's uh, 1795 yeah, is for the private section of the business so we'll take that away um, and we're going to add it into drawings. As I said, I'll, I'll do all those drawings later. So the 5385 then is our expense. Okay. Um, interest 1500 uh, is to do with this loan. So there's going to be loan interest due, uh, basically. Um, think so um, what I might do is I might come back to that loan interest I'll just make a note of it um, and come back to it when we do the, the when we when we get the loan interest down in the paragraph um, insurance premium we've done a uh, chart uh, standing order for charitable organization um, covenant we'll call that uh, you can call it charitable donation it's all the one uh, three thousand just go down and check there's nothing due and there's there can't obviously be drawings on that and then we've got these delivery vans of 35 two. so um delivery vans are a fixed asset uh, just check that there are that there's no uh, depreciation or anything like that uh, which there isn't there can be there's nothing said there can't be there is in, in some of the, the type b's there's depreciation so um we'll just put that 35 two in in there uh, debtors we've done cash we said is that contra entry and then dividends is four thousand now that's not dividends paid that's dividends lodged so that's money we have earned and we have lodged into our bank account so that is capital introduced okay so nearly there uh, murphy took goods from stock to the value of 100 per week and a cash of 120 per household expenses during the year. We've done both of those drawings already and we're going to tidy them up later on. So we borrowed 120,000, so that's a loan. Um, the remainder of the loan was used to purchase furniture. So the remainder of the loan is 30,000. Um, so furniture is a fixed asset. Uh, again, that would have been you, the lads who did the leaving cert in 2015, but it should have been straightforward enough, just 30,000 is the difference between the two numbers. Um, now, um, it was agreed that Murphy would pay interest on the last day of, of each month at 5% per annum. So, we'll do our interest. So that is uh, five percent of one hundred twenty thousand. We got the loan on the first of the ninth, so ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. So that's four twelfths. So two thousand. Um, now from that, we have to take away whatever we've paid, which is 1,500. And that gives you a due of 500. So that loan interest due that I said we'd, we knew we'd have is 500 euros. Now, there's always drawings on the loan interest, so, uh, so we can go down and we'll see that uh, 20% of the interest payable, which is this 2,000, is for the private section of the business. So 20% of that is drawings. So 20% of 2,000 is 400. So that means the interest payable is 1,600. So the expense is 1,600. So the G500, the expense 1,600. So we'll put those answers in. Now, um, 
All right, so the capital was so, so must be repaid in a lump sum in 2022, and to provide for this, the bank was to transfer 1250 on the last day of each month. So we're going to create an investment fund. So last day of each month, starting on the 30th and 9th, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12. So four, uh, just four uh, months investment. Now, normally when there's an investment fund, there's interest earned. So, so down here we are 30 euros. So it's going to be four by 1250, which will be 5,000. But there's uh, an extra 30 euros to be added on. So that's... Uh, 5030 now also that investment interest of 30 gets added on there okay um now there is another way that these can be asked they could say that the loan is going to be repaid in e in uh equal installments so say it's said it's paid in equal installments over 10 years uh beginning next year um that would be one t one tenth of 120,000 would be 12,000 which would go in there at Mount Fondue within one year because 12,000 would fall due within one year and this will go down to say 108,000 it hasn't happened that way but it is possible but in total the loan will always be the, the 120,000 so just be aware of that um all right, so just the drawings, um, and then we'll be finished. Uh, well, we have to work out the bank, and then we'll be finished, sorry. So anyway, Murphy estimates that 25% of the furniture, okay, so the furniture was 30,000. Uh, so 25% of that would be uh, 7,500. So I'm just going to take that away. That's 22,500. Um, so we'll make my drawings working now. So we've twenty-two thousand five hundred. Uh, then we have the interest payable, which was uh, four hundred euros. Uh, then we had the light and heat. Which was one seven nine five, uh, and we also had the cash and the stock. So the stock was one hundred by fifty two, so five thousand two hundred, and the cash was one twenty by fifty two, which is six two four zero. Uh, so my total drawings. Thirty six uh, one three five, which is definitely not right. Sorry, furniture is should be seven thousand five hundred. Uh, just there was no other mistakes. Yeah, so I put in the answer for furniture rather than the drawing. So anyway, um, so that twenty one one three five uh goes uh, in your finance by as a minus. Okay, so nearly there. Um, so we've dealt with this here. Um, you know, if you're doing this in Leave Insert, it might have been that you came across this at the end and you just have to change the numbers when you get there. But just remember you're adding 6,000 to debtors, uh, which is going to change your sales. And then you're adding 5,000 to the cost price, or you're taking 5,000 from stock because you, even though you, uh, you've sold the goods, they're still in your warehouse, so you, that you, do, you don't own them. Um, so anyway, the rest of it, we'll put the numbers in. So stock is in, uh, debtors is in, um, creditors is 32.6, uh, cash is an asset of 600, electricity due is a liability, and that's uh, 380. And then the 30 yarn by the fund today, so we've put that in there in our investments and we've also put it in there. So we've only one thing to do really, uh, that's work out the bank figure. 
that the bank figure is a record of everything that's been lodged into the bank minus everything that's come out of the bank. So um, we're looking at our bank lodgements, our bank payments, uh, our loan and uh, and the money we've spent uh, from our loan. So. So we go bank, right? So if this was a T account, I'll just make it a T account here. If I can. Um, um, format. Let's size. Let me see. Okay. So uh, we'll stick in our lodgements on the debit side. Uh, so we've got um, thirty-four thousand plus one hundred and ten thousand. Plus four thousand. Now, what I also want to put in is uh, our bank, uh, our loan of one hundred twenty thousand. Okay, now it actually wouldn't make one bit of difference if you did this loan part in this question, but generally it does. So you put in all of those, um, and then on the payment side. We're going to put in all of our uh, bank payments, so forty-two one for the creditors. The six eight, uh, one five, just the numbers as they appear up here. Uh, three eight for insurance, um, the charitable organisation at three thousand, and the delivery vans at thirty five two. Now we then also have to put in what we used the money for the loan. So the buildings of ninety thousand, and then there was furniture of thirty thousand. So that makes up the 120,000. So that's what I'm saying. If you left them out in this question, it wouldn't actually make any difference because that 120 equals these 120s here. Um, what we do have to put in is the uh, investment fund payments. So we have paid 4 by 1250, uh, which is 5,000. Now, don't mind the uh, the thirty euros that's owed, owed to us. That's hasn't been paid. If it was paid, it would go into bank payments here. So, uh, or sorry, the bank lodgement. So you would see it from there. Um, so we could ignore that. So if we add up the debit side, we get two six eight. The credit side is going to be less than two six eight. So we'll just put 268 here. And now I just know that because I checked the answer, to be honest. So to find a balance, we're going to take that 268 and we're going to take away all of the payments and the investments. And that gives you a balance of 50,600. So we have a bank balance 50,600, which goes in your current assets. Okay. Um, so we're finished there. Um, we're going to add on that. We'll just find our profits. We'll add on that 30. And we're going to take away our expenses. And we get uh, 93. A35 as our net profit. Now just like in a normal question, net profit will go into your finance by 93835. 
Okay, so we'll add up our fixed assets. Ideally, you should be showing the total of the tangible fixed a a assets separately to the investments of the goodwill, but I ran out of the room, so didn't bother. Um, no great panic. Add up your current assets, your current liabilities. Take them away from each other. Uh, that gives you your 55, 320. Definitely gone wrong somewhere. Um, sure. Completely forgot the insurance prepaid from one of our very first working. So you'll always have insurance prepaid. So I'm not really sure how how I forgot that. Um. So that three months insurance prepaid which you have, you create, I think it was 900, it was 950. That prepaid is obviously an asset, so that was a ridiculous sort of stuff. So probably down to a H2 for me, um, given those two mistakes. So we'll take the 89.750, take away the 33.480, um, add that to your fixed assets and that's four one six seven hundred. Hopefully this is gonna balance. Um so take our capital, add our capital introduce, add our net profit and take away our drawings and then add on your loan and four one six seven hundred is the final answer. Um so I wouldn't have got at the balance, obviously, and uh, with a couple of mistakes I made, but um, I think I probably would have been able to go back and find that insurance prepaid fairly quickly. It's uh, it's easy enough to, to realise that it's not going to balance and you can look for things like that. So that's A and B done. Part C is the accruals concept, a little bit of theory. The accruals concept um, basically says that you have to record expenses and gains as they occur, not when you pay them. So... Um, you include them in the accounts uh, what, um, in the time period that you're going to use the expense, not the time period you're going to pay them. So it, le it leads to prepayments and dues. Um, uh, why is it fundamental to accounting? Um, so uh, um, it's fundamental basically if you don't, in if you if you don't uh, use the accruals uh, payments, then profits can be overstated and understated uh, for a period of time, um, and you don't you won't really get a consistency to your accounting practice. Okay, um, so uh, basically the accruals concept is if you sell something on credit, you account for it when you sell it, not when you're paid for it. Um, if you um, if you pay for an expense such as insurance. Um, and it goes into next year, you only account for the period that is, is for this year. Um, so that's where we're at. Okay, that's this week's uh, this week's incomplete records. Um, so I'm adding up, these are adding up to, uh, to a, a good number of videos at this stage. So next week I'll do incomplete B. Um, I put up production budgets. Um, I might do cash budgets next week as well. Um, and that'll just leave us with a few uh, a few other ones from last year to uh, to get up. Alright, we'll see you in school next week.